Which was it? Was it underwater and came bursting forth, or did a mist go up and, uh, and water the earth? Look at Genesis 1 on page 1, and look at verse 20. And God said, Let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life. Where did the moving creature come from? The waters. Okay? The birds and the beasts are created, and they're created, watch in verse 24, and God said, Let the earth bring forth the living creatures, the cattle. And look at verse 26, and God said, Let us make man. So here in Genesis 1, verses 20, 24, and 26, the birds, the beasts are created before man. Now, if you look at 126, it says man was created to have dominion over the birds and the beasts that were already created. But look at Genesis 2, verse 7. And Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. There's the formation of man. And look now, Genesis 2, verse 19. And out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. So here God formed every beast and brought them unto Adam. Adam was formed before the beast, but in Genesis 1 the beasts were formed before Adam. And I'm not being picky about it. It's very important when you begin to look at this because what you're going to see is that the book of Genesis is not an entire book. There are two and three distinct creations or uh, authors of Genesis. Look at this. In Ge look at Genesis 1, verse 20. In Genesis 1, verse 20, it said, And God said, Let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life, the fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of the heaven. All the fowls were brought forth from where? The waters. Do you see that? Let the waters bring forth abundantly all the fowl. But now look at Genesis 2. Verse 19, and out of the ground the Lord formed every beast. Which was it? Did they come from the waters or did they come from the ground? It's very important. And it's very important for you to see that on the first two pages of the Bible there are tremendous contradictions. Tremendous contradictions. And as we go along, it, it gets a little more interesting. Look at this one. Page 1, or page 2, Genesis 1, verse 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. God created man in his own image. Now look at Genesis 2, verse 7. And the Lord God formed man out of the dust of the ground. See? And so which is it? Is, is he created in the image of God or is he created out of the dust of the ground? Two are certainly not consistent. And it's not until man has eaten the forbidden fruit. Look at Genesis 3, verse 22. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become as one of us, because what? He has eaten the forbidden fruit. The man has become as one of us to know good and evil. Not until man has eaten the forbidden fruit does he become as God. Isn't that interesting? The fall is actually the ascension. Man did not become as God until he had disobeyed God. Man did not become as God until he had, quote, unquote, eaten the forbidden fruit. Let's go on. Genesis 1.28. In Genesis chapter 1 and verse 28, And God blessed them, meaning Adam and Eve, God said to them, Be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. That's pretty good. That's, that's dominion. Here, man is made Lord over everything. Right? Look at Genesis 2, verse 15. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the Garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. He's a gardener. Quite a difference. Now, look at Genesis 1, verse 27 and 28. And what does it say there? Man and woman. God created man in his image, and the image of God created male and female, created he them instantaneously. Male and female made simultaneously. And he said, be fruitful and multiply. Now look at in Genesis 2, verse 7. First of all, in verse 7, man is made out of the dust of the ground. Verse 8, he's a gardener, puts him in the Garden of Eden. Okay. Verse 15, there he goes, put into the Garden of Eden again. He's placed by himself in the garden. Then verse 22, 
In verse 22, it says, Finally, a rib is taken out of man, and woman is made out of the man's rib, but merely as a helpmate. Before, they were created simultaneously to have lord and have dominion over everything. Now, all of this business happens. Man's put in the garden. He's a gardener. He's put to sleep. They rip a rib out of him, and they make a lady. It's, it's very interesting because the, the, the descriptions are so different. So the fact is, and this is what I want you to see, the second account of creation starts at Genesis 2 from verse 4 to verse 25. That's the second account of creation. And it also is together with the story of the fall in Genesis 3. So Genesis 2 verses 4 to 25 and Genesis 3 are written by one person composed by an altogether different person that wrote Genesis 1 and Genesis 5. Completely different. Completely different. So the Bible strangely begins account 1 in Genesis 1 and goes up to Genesis 2, verse 3. Right here. As soon as it gets to Genesis 4, it's a different writer. But yet they're put in the Bible like a novel. See? But here's where it goes. You go from Genesis 1 to Genesis 2, verse 3, and then it stops. Genesis 2, verse 4 on is a different writer. But when you get to Genesis 5, you got the first writer back again. See, in Genesis uh, at 2, 4, the second account which is completely different here in Genesis 2, verse 4, than in Genesis 1. The second account, which is completely different, begins as if it is a continuation of 1, which it isn't. In other words, Genesis 1 starts here, but the writer ends it, and then Genesis 2 takes over here, and it continues as if it's a novel, as if it's the same story. And it's not. There's two different, two different authors completely, two different stories completely. The second account goes to Genesis 4, verse 25, and that stops there. Then in Genesis 5, the first account begins again. So you have the first writer, let's call writer number 1, he writes from Genesis 1 to Genesis 2, verse 3. The second writer starts at Genesis 2, verse 4, and goes up through Genesis 3, up until Genesis 4, 26, and then at Genesis 5, the first writer takes over again. And here's the interesting thing about all this. It is the second writer, Genesis 2, from verse 4 to 25, who tells us about Adam and Eve, Cain and Abel, the serpent, the fall, the kicked out of the garden. The first, uh, the first guy has no idea, never heard of any of that stuff. Never heard of Adam and Eve, never heard of Cain and Abel, never heard of the serpent, never heard of the apple, never heard of anything getting get, get kicked out of, the, out of the garden, doesn't know anything about it. So then we go on, and it's interesting. And I want to show you why, when you look at something like this, you say, well, so what's the difference? It's a big, big difference, because in the first place, nobody ever told you this before. You saw that the book of Genesis started at Genesis 1 and ended up at Genesis 35, wherever it is, and it's not true. It's a bunch of little documents, all different documents, which are actually myths which come out of places such as Babylon and so forth. And they're put together in the book. And how did they get in the book? You should be able to sit here and tell me how these things got into the book, because they were put into the book by a guy named Ezra.